Hi there. You're in the lab with your mate JJ. So, uh, i got so many videos to do. Um, and I've got to figure out what order to do them all in. I think that this video, I'm just going to tell you about Electronics, which was the, um, the Electronics Expo, ex Expo uh, and Conference, I guess you'd say, Expo. It was on a week or two ago. It's taken me a while to get around to posting a video about it. I uh, had some problems with the power system in the, in the lab and I, I had to get a, a couple of new power boards and I had to get new batteries for four UPS systems. Anyway, that's mostly done now so I can make videos again, which is good. Uh, and I've been meaning to get around to this one for a while. So uh, what I really thought I'd do is just show you the swag. You know, you probably heard of swag. It's, it stands for Stuff We All Get. Stuff We All Get. S-W-A-G. Swag. Um, which is, you know, uh, what I'll show you uh, on this video. Um, just the bits and pieces that I collected as I, as I walked around um, the expo. I went with my friend Alexi, um, which was really excellent. It was good to spend the day with him. And I, uh, I really enjoyed the expo. I'll definitely be going again uh, in the future. I think some years it's in Sydney and some years it's in Melbourne. So if I want to go next year, I'll have to fly down to Melbourne, which I might do. I'll, I'll certainly think about it. Um, and then if I, I guess if I, whether I make it next year or not, the year after when it's in Sydney, I'll, I'll very, be very happy to go again. So, um, I turned up in my costume, this costume, uh, <clears throat> as I said I would, I did that and, uh, that was a bit of fun. And, uh, I had, uh, I had business cards printed so that I could, uh, introduce myself, um, oh dear. <laughs> the phone, excuse me. Sorry, phone call. So yeah, as I was saying, I, I had business cards printed um, so that I could um, introduce myself and I, I handed out about 75 cards. So I, I was a busy boy. Um, I did net a couple of subscribers. So uh, uh, some of the people that, uh, that heard about me did actually subscribe to the channel. So if that's you, thanks very much. And I hope you enjoy the, the videos that I make. Um, I'll show you uh, the details of that in a second. Um, I wanted to also brag that I met Dave Jones of EEV Blog fame. Um, I'll, I'll put a link to the EEV Blog in the show notes for this video, but you probably already know him. He's uh, the, the Aussie uh, uh, electronics uh, blogger. He's uh, prolific. Uh, he's full time. He's gone pro, pro YouTuber. So yeah, it was really excellent to to meet Dave, and uh, he was nice enough to plug me on his Twitter feed. So that was pretty cool. Um, got a few thousand views, courtesy of that. Um, and of course, the other, uh, you know, as as if it wasn't good enough just to meet Dave, Dave Jones, I I bumped into Nicholas Vinan, who is the um, editor of the venerable silicon chip magazine so um yeah i had a bit of a chin wag with him so that was that was really excellent I, I i had hoped that he would be there and that i might bump into him and then he was and i did so that was really great um anyway uh in this video i'm just going to show you the bits and pieces that i that i came home with because you know they give you stuff at conferences um i thought i might show you the bits and pieces that i got um, so let's jump over to the bench and, and have a look at what I got. Here we are on the bench. Now I suppose the first thing uh, to show you is uh, the business card. I don't know if it'll go under the... Uh, yeah, so um, that's just a bit too close, isn't it? So the logo up there, of course, that's a, a version of the uh, of that the hackers um, uh, the hacker logo, which is the glider from Conway's Game of Life. I guess I'll put a link to those details in the show notes. Uh, and then I just said hi there, I'm JJ, and then I uh, I, I gave the name uh, in the lab with JJ, and then I said that 
it's a video blog of interest to the electronics hobbyist and then I, I put the, the link that link there to jjlab.net that's the short link to the website and then there was a QR code that uh, that would get you there so um, yeah that was uh, that was my card and I suppose I might as well show you I, I got this um, container here um, and I filled it up with all of the cards of everyone that I that I met on the day I just get rid of uh, get rid of that so um, uh, I, I might as well just flip through them uh, <clears throat> should I should I tell you about them I don't know or maybe we won't flip through them anyway I, I, I got a whole bunch of business cards which I thought was pretty cool and I don't know if I'll do it on this video I was going to go and have a look at their websites and just learn a little bit more about them um, maybe we'll do that together I don't know I'll, I'll think about that alright but what I really wanted to do was just show you my swag so the first thing was I got a couple of bags um, this particular bag um, is the one that they uh, gave you when you arrived so this was the default bag everyone got one of these it had the program in it um, and everything actually you know I, speaking of the program I suppose that's a pretty reasonable place to start I'll just um, I'll show you the uh, the program now this is it I, I um I didn't realize until I got home that they'd given us this so I didn't actually use this uh, to to my full advantage on the day um, because I didn't even know that I had it because I hadn't gone in detail through the bag I just thought I'd have a look at all that stuff when I got home and then I got home and I had a look in here and I found the floor plan exhibitor list and I thought, ah, oh, that would have been good. I could have just checked off every little thing. Basically, you came in here, and we kind of went around that way, and then we ended up at the cafe. The toilets were through that way. Didn't make it into any of the seminars, which is the opposite of what I thought would happen. I thought that we'd just be in seminars all day long, but it turned out we were just in stalls all day long. So uh, this is where they had the soldering competition, C20. And this is a massive long list of... Um, of exhibitors so I got about uh, 26 business cards I think um, so that's far fewer than than I could have I thought I, I kind of got the feeling that I'd seen most of everything but I, I think that was quite wrong I I only got around to about a quarter of, 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 of what was available on the day so um, with the benefit of experience I think when I go back in the future years that I'll uh, I'll do a better job of uh, of of, uh, of engaging with everyone that's there. Um, so I'm not sure how long. I, I I don't mind making this video a really long video. Um, so what we might do is after we've had a look at the swag, and we'll do that now. Um, I think we might just take this over to the um, to the computer. And we'll just duck in and have a quick look at, at all of the uh, all of the exhibitors. That'll be a bit of fun. Uh, of course, um, if you're not interested in 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 going through a hundred websites, which might take a very long time, uh, then this video might not be for you. Um, but before we we get stuck into that, and I think we will, um, let's just have a look at the swag. So, like I said, they started you with the uh, <clears throat> with the um, I'm just going to turn that that off um, with the, the Redback Test Services now Redback Test Services is different to the Redback Amplifier and uh, 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 and such um, that are a spin-off of the Outronics brand so that was a bit confusing because Outronics was there um, and they do have a Redback brand but it's not this one this is different um, and uh, and Worth Electronic gave me all sorts of stuff. Um, so uh, um, they're they're obviously a German company, uh, more space than you expect. So there you go. And then Element 14, um, uh, an 
AVNet Company or Avnet Company. Um, and this was, I think, uh, what was the lady's name? Uh, Tess? Tess Turner, maybe? I forget. I think it was Tess Turner. Um, and uh, I actually see them. I'll show you. Um, these are the uh, Element 14 uh, Connect magazines. Um, I've got a bunch of them. Um, they're basically just advertising the products and services of uh, Element 14. Um, and uh, if you have a look on the inside cover here, which is... Oh, no. Uh, this must be... Uh, that's must be something else. This is the Connect magazine, which is what I'm looking for. Um, and there we go. Tess Turner, as I said. So, uh, Tess Turner, uh, one of the marketing executives, uh, and she was there. And a bit of a chin wag with her, so that was pretty cool. And she's the person who gave me this particular bag. So, um, yeah, it was nice to, to, nice to meet them. I'm, a, I'm an uh, Element 14 customer. Uh, uh, happily they have an excellent range of products so if you need something you can find it there um, which is is always good so let's, uh, let's keep on keeping on um, <clears throat> this was more stuff from worth um, their little packages I think they're both the same they are so uh, Got some uh, small post-it notes, some big post-it notes, and little coloured um, sticky tabs. So, very handy for the stationary drawer. <coughs> and then, we got a, a ruler. Oh, by the way, I took my ruler. I, I've got this one in my pocket here. This is the, uh, the Adafruit uh, one PCB to ruler them all. <laughs> So uh, yeah, I, uh, I put my Adafruit um, uh, PCB ruler in my, uh, my pocket protector here. I had that with me on the day. I almost lost it. I was showing it to someone and they thought I was giving it to them. And then I had to be, oh, no, actually. <laughs> so uh, yeah. Now this, um, okay. Well, that's, uh, it's, uh, it's flush on the short end. So that, that's something. That's what you want out of your rulers. Similarly on the on the uh, inches uh, scale it's flush on the on the end as well. It, uh, it does have an overlap bit for the last uh, <coughs> edge of the thing but that doesn't matter at all. Um, so uh, yeah this is from IMP Electronic Solutions and we'll be checking them out later on. So uh, there we go. They've got a, uh, a New Zealand uh, phone number and uh, all our PCB suppliers meet these standards and they've got a list of industry standards there the quality system that the ISO 9001 all right and then uh, oh there we go so uh, it, they, they obviously uh, print circuits and they've got the sorts of circuits that they uh, that they support 1 to 24 layers uh, copper weight half ounce to 6 ounce materials FR4, Rogers, high TG, metal back, flex circuit, rigid flex circuit, membrane switches, labels, solar paste stencils, cables, metal enclosures with sheet metal casting. There we go. And... Oh, this is not stuff that we got. That was just something that I left earlier. Might as well tell you about these, though. I have to say... Um, I got these cheapo ones from China and I wasn't expecting much. I thought they'd be kind of terrible, but they're my go-to snips. They're really great. They're very flush along the side there and they're small and nimble and they're sharp uh, and they work great. So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know if I've got if I've registered them in my uh, equipment or not. I'll have to check that when I'm doing the show notes. This is my other ones and these are, are terrible by comparison. Look how clunky and big they are and they're kind of blunt and... Yeah, I much prefer the cheapo China, China ones. Now, here we go. Oh, no. Again, this is not swag. This is something that I bought for my friend. So that's separate when it, when I need to talk about that. Uh, what have we got here? Uh, 
I've really made a mess of things, haven't I? Now, if you spend enough time going to conferences, you never need to buy a pen. Uh, I got five pens. Um, this is a, a, a bullet tip 1.0. Look at that. That's great. Permanent marker. It's not a whiteboard marker. From Jay Burrows. That's interesting. Jay Burrows is just like... Eh, I'm surprised Jay Burrows was there. They're just a, a stationary brand, I thought. Now, this one, this is from Worth as well. It's a ballpoint pen. And this is from Ingun. And it is also a ballpoint pen. And this from ECI is a ballpoint pen. And finally, another one of the Worth pens. So I seem to have landed with two of these guys. All right, so there's our pens. Now, these are the lanyards that we got for the day, sponsored by GPC Electronics. They're actually pretty cool lanyards because um, these uh, metal bits, they just clip on to the, uh, to the paper thing. There was no plastic um, bit, so that's best for the environment, I suppose. <laughs> now these are fun. I actually got two bags of these, but I already, uh, I already worked my way through the first one. They are just what I thought they would be. Um, they're lollies. So, uh, these particular lollies are from Germany. Thanks, Germany. And we got uh, two, four, six, eight. Eight little gummy bears. Those are pretty nice. So, um, oh yeah, this was fun. They had this absolutely enormous uh, jar, or I guess you'd call it a jar. It was so big. It was like this big, it was huge, it was this big. Uh, it must have had a million of these things in them. There was so many. I probably should have uh, taken advantage and grabbed a, a whole heap more. But uh, these are what they call pogo pins. And you use them to make uh, test rigs for circuit boards. And basically they, they get embedded in the bottom of the thing and they sit up like that and you can see them there and they're actually quite sharp. They're also um, spring loaded. So I don't know if I can show you really, but you see I can push down on, on that and it's got a little bit of a spring in it. So uh, yeah, these are spring loaded pogo pins. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go next year uh, when I see this stand, I'm going to get more than six of them. I'm going to get 600 of them. They had so many there and they were just giving them away. I should have really taken some. It would be really good fun to uh, to learn how to use them and make some sort of a testing rig. Although, I, uh, I don't know how you mount them. They're, uh, they're pretty big at the bottom. I don't know if they'd go through a standard PCB perf board hole or not. I suppose we could check. Why wouldn't we do that? So uh, here's a run-of-the-mill um, bit of bit of prototyping board, and let's pop out our uh, our pogo pins and see if they'll fit in. No, too big. Too big. Oh, it fits in the corner bit there. But, uh, yeah, basically no go. So I'm not quite sure how I'd use them. I'd have to figure that out. But uh, that's kind of what this video blog's all about, is just figuring stuff like that out. So maybe we could figure it out. I don't know. Anyway, those are my pogo pins. And... Ah, more from Element 14. Now this is a USB hub. Handy. So uh, I think I'll be tearing that down later, won't I, and have a look at it. It's obviously not uh, USB 3. It's just the old um, simple one, which is pretty good. I uh, actually wanted to get some things that were uh, low speed because I might be able to... Uh, have a look at them under my 70 megahertz scope if they're slow enough. I think 
my scope might be able to do USB one speed, so I'm not sure. Now this is from Rolex, and it looks like mints, doesn't it? Let's see what we got? Oh, yep, they're uh, they're plastically covered. So let's take the plastic bit off, chuck that in the bin, and let's see what we got in here. Yep, those look like mints to me. Mmm, minty. Alright. And... Oh, these were cool. Check these out. These are, uh, oh, these are from Rolex as well. The people who gave me the mints. And that says, our passion is enclosures. I'm uh, quite partial to an enclosure myself. Now this thing is a two meter ruler, which is pretty cool, isn't it? Uh, I won't be able to show you the whole thing, but basically you just pop it out bit at a time and it gets longer and longer and longer and you can actually extend this this one. That's one meter there, but it actually goes for a whole two meters, um, which is pretty huge, isn't it? So if I needed a two meter ruler, there's one. And this is basically the same thing, but it only goes out to one meter, um, but it does pack down to a much smaller form factor. So those were pretty cool. Oh, looks like we've got another pen. I must have missed this earlier. Oh, it's an Element 14 pen. Very cool. Also a ballpoint pen. And then uh, this is another PCB ruler. This one is not flush on the ends, um, but maybe I could hit it with the Dremel and, and take it back so that it, uh, it's flush. Although I suppose I don't need to because I've got so many of these, don't I? It does have a little um, wire gauge meter here. Those are pretty handy. Um, and then of course, uh, there's various specs, notes and such, and. Uh, um, form factors for uh, SMD components. Uh, again, bragging the ISO 9001 compliance and uh, 13485, whatever those are. They sound kind of boring and compliancy, don't they? Proudly serving Australasia since 2003, Quali Eco circuits. So these guys do PCB circuit printing. That's pretty cool. And looks like someone gave me a diary. Oh no, it's not a diary, it's just a good old fashioned notebook. That's awesome. Definitely going to keep that handy. That'll be my next one for sure. If I could get one every year, I'd be laughing. So, uh, yeah, very good. How business gets done, ECI. Excellent. Now, this is the, uh, the literature. Uh, I saw this, that the Road and Schwartz people um, had a live de demo at 2 p.m. Uh, and that's actually, it was during this demo that I met Nicholas Vinen, so that was pretty cool. And uh, <clears throat> This looks like worth electronic again. It is. So, uh, okay, they're advertising durable connectors. Fair enough. And then, uh, what's this? Cellular module. Well, there was a, a, a lot. Uh, okay. So this is uh, to help you, uh, the thermal uh, materials for heat dissipation and such. Okay. Wow. Electronic and electro electromechanical components. Oh wow, look at that. 
all sorts of stuff. Ah. Uh. Oh, I wonder what that is. Hey, that looks pretty cool. So this is from uh, Roden Schwartz. Uh, and their tag seems to be make ideas real and this looks kind of cool so it's a, a cable stripper uh, a small flat tip screwdriver a ruler a can opener a cap lifter three multi-tooth keys uh, three hexagon sockets, two spoke keys, Phillips screwdriver, small flat tip screwdriver, and a, a nail drawer. And the, oh there's an inch ruler as well on the back side. So how is that mounted there? Is it just stuck there or see how to disconnect that? How do I get it off? Oh, yep, it's glued on. So I'll just uh, pull it off. Interesting glue. It, it uh, came right off. Cool. So, uh, yeah, this is that, that little, the little tool that they gave us. I, uh, I don't know how I'd put it on my uh, key ring. Maybe I'll run the key ring through there. Uh, but it does sort of seem like maybe... Uh, it's worth uh, keeping. I wasn't sure what that bit was. Do you remember what that bit was? Yeah, look what it says. It's unlabeled, that bit. Unlabeled. I think that's the bit where I'll, I'll thread it onto my keys. Awesome. Thank you, uh, Roden Schwartz. That's probably my favorite little swag bit. Except for maybe these gummies. They were pretty nice. And did you see on the back here? Uh, Frock gummy mitts. 20 Franken Geholt. I don't know how to speak German. I'm an imposter. All right, so that was a cool bit of kit, kit from uh, Roden Schwartz. Okay, now look at this. Electronic components. So it's a, uh, they're obviously getting rid of old stock here because this is the 22 and 23 year um, <coughs> stuff not the latest stuff. Maybe it is the latest, who knows. So, uh, obviously make all kinds of components, don't they? Opto couplers and they're obviously a dead set uh, component manufacturer, which is quite interesting, isn't it? And it'll be uh, German engineering. Sounds pretty good to me. And then they've got electromechanical components, and holy cow, this thing's a monster, isn't it? Look at that. You know, I think we're not going to go through the websites one at a time, but we can have a close look at the uh, at the literature that we've got here. That's going to take an hour at least, maybe two hours. So uh, let's have a look, huh? So. This is uh, connectors from uh, from from, uh, from from Worth uh, Electronic, <clears throat> and wow, they've got all sorts, don't they? Oh, this is they called it um, electromechanical, so it includes uh, switches. That'll be nice to have a look at. Connectors, switches, assembly technique, red cube terminals, design kits. Cool. So the connectors. Uh, our first look at this so reds where they are they're uh, they're everywhere 
Well, they're not everywhere. But uh, they're global. That's for sure. So they've got uh, design support. That's interesting. I wonder how they deliver that. Email. Who knows? Total quality management. Okay. I'm talking about environmental stuff. Board to board connectors. Okay. Uh, pin and socket headers. Okay. <sighs> Module connectors. Red fit IDC sked. That means nothing to me. But the pictures tell a thousand words, don't they? Wow. More connectors. Wire to board connectors. Okay. Mini power connector. All right. Those look like the sort of power connectors you'd see in the ATX power supply. It's a micro power connector. Smaller version of the same thing. Crimp sked. Sked is something that means almost nothing to me. I, I've never heard of it before. Ah, FFC type 1, FFC type 2, and FFC folded. You know, when you get these ribbon cables, I've never successfully ordered the right one. <laughs> I don't know how you how you do it. There's just so much variation. But it's good to see FCC. Then maybe that I could search for that and learn something about FCC. I'm gonna have some more of these mints while we're uh, while we're running through this stuff. Okay. So they've got a bunch of of, uh, of USB. Uh, bits and pieces, so that's good. Very good. HDMI, okay. Card, interesting. They've got all of the cards. SD card, micro, SIM, SIM cards. Interesting. Modular jacks. Interesting. D sub, which is the good old serial cable. Also VGA monitors, I believe, are D sub, aren't they? I think they are. Circular connectors. So these are things that you can uh, you can screw tight after they're plugged together. And then the ultra miniature RF coaxial connectors. All right, so these are RF connectors. They're very particular, though, aren't they? They're a bit different to what I would expect. Anyway, uh, SMP. I suppose that's surface mount. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, MMCX coax. All right, I've seen these before. I think I've got some of these ones. MCX coax. Okay. This is all radio gear that I uh, that I don't have anything to do with. SMA. I think I might have some of those. I'm not sure. Reverse polarity SMA. All right. N-type coax. And uh, coax adapters. 
this is pretty handy because it gives you the uh, the names and the pictures which are, are really a, a blessing when you need to search for just the one thing so I'm going to definitely keep this particular magazine or catalogue handy I'll keep it up there with my Element 14 Connect magazines this is uh, Terminal Blocks okay so uh, they're basically screw in okay these are screwless okay so you put the bit in and then you flip the thing down and it hooks on very interesting I don't think I've ever used that, that type of connector pluggable types LED connectors hmm there you go <coughs> fuse holders okay I actually got a bunch of fuses uh, will I show you my fuses? nah we have plenty of other things to do battery holders Okay, very good. Okay, these are tools for uh, crimping. Crimping. Very interesting. Oh, what happened then? I dropped something. Oh, it was the... Uh, the Roden Schwartz uh, thingamajig. I'm going to put that on my key ring. Ah, there we go. So they're bragging about the uh, materials they use. And uh, there we go, micro switches. Now these are the kinds of things you find in a, in a mouse. Industrial control dip switches. Dip switches are pretty handy. Slide switches. Okay. Push button switches. Rotary switches. It's a bit fancy, isn't it? There we go. <coughs> Encoder. Okay. So it's rotary encoders. They're pretty cool. I've got a bunch of those actually. I haven't used, well, I did use them, but uh, only for testing. Toggle switches. Okay, very good. Uh, rocker switches. Okay, very good. You can get the illuminated ones as well. Illuminated switches. Okay. Great. Uh, multifunctional test tweezer. Okay. So it's basically tweezer probes. Got a bunch of those, but my ones are cheaper ones. This is the ones I've got. And they just uh, go through to your uh, multimeter. I've got a bunch of them actually. I just dropped something. Oh, it's just another pair of them, but I, I gave them, uh, I, 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 I put some banana cables on the end. <sighs> yeah, probably made a video about that. I don't remember. I've actually made a lot of videos now. I, I don't remember everything that I've done. More than 75 videos posted on the, on the main channel, I think, now. So these are uh, plastic spacers. They all look pretty good, don't they? So uh, it seems like Worth Electronic uh, make a whole lot of really interesting uh, kit. It's good to know. So the sort of things you learn when you go to an electronics expo. Ah. 
So this is uh, surface mount joinery by the looks of it. They're terminals. Okay. Fair enough. Design kits. Okay. Terms and conditions. Okay, that's the, the fine print. And there's a, a photo index electronic and extra electromechanical components. They have a very diverse product range, don't they? Very interesting. Now, this is Scientific Devices Australia. They obviously make test gear. So, um, digital oscilloscope. Okay. AC DC calibration. Okay. And battery analyzers. Battery analyzers and test systems are the first stop when fast rise time, accurate control of system parameters and charge discharge cycles are required for applications such as material research, batteries and supercapacitors. Arbon offer the most flexible test systems for future channel and power expansion. MITS Pro software has the ability, the capability of running any standard or customized test profiles that are required for your research, such as life cycle testing, performing charge discharge cycling of multiple cells or batteries simultaneously to obtain charge and discharge capacity, energy, DC, internal resistance, and other valuable information. So these are obviously an Australian company. There you go. Amplifier research is synonymous for EMC and RF and microwave amplifiers. AE Tecron is a world leader in the design and manufacture of DC to 1 MHz industrial power amplifiers and test systems. All of this stuff is way beyond my pay grade. I don't deal with that, that kind of high-end, high-tech sort of stuff, which I'm mostly a capacitors and resistors kind of a guy. Aren't I? I love making cables. Who doesn't love making cables? Dyne Industries. Custom made transformers, power supplies, and wound components. So these look like inductors, don't they? 100% Australian owned, Australian made, to Australian international standards. I actually quite enjoyed uh, chatting to the guys from Dyne. They, uh, they, were, they were good value. So uh, look at all of this stuff, and I said to them, and I'll, I'll say it to you, inductors just do my head in. Resistors I kind of understand, capacitors I kind of understand, even transistors I kind of understand. But inductors, it's just madness how you can have like a coil uh, induces a magnetic current. And the other way around, a magnet induces a, 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 an electric pulse. Fascinating. So, Echo Electronics Company, EMS industry leaders, integrity builds up successful brand. Okay, they're from Hong Kong. Echo Electronics Company. There you go. Ah. What do they make? They look like buzzers. Okay, so they've been manufacturing electronics for 35 years. Listed company, listed Hong Kong company. And... They look like they make very specialized bits and pieces. PCBA and consumer products. 
Oh, okay, so they'll actually do the assembly for you. That's cool. And they 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 make a, a whole lot of buzzers. Do they make anything else? I'm not sure. Fascinating. It's amazing how specialized our global industries are, and you can get away with just making buzzers and 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 do it for 35 years. Electronic electronic test and measurement. Emona. Oscilloscopes, RF test equipment, function generators and counters, EMC pre-compliance testing, PC base and data acquisition, multimeters, power supplies, other batch top instruments, instrument and process calibrators, harness and cable testers, high pot and production testers, 3D printers and additive manufacturing, multi-layer PCB 3D printers. Hey, doesn't that scope look cool? I wonder how much that costs. A DS... 70,000 Where's the DS70,000? Here it is. Oh, they're not going to give us prices. No prices, huh? You know that means I can't afford it. <laughs> yeah. So there's your scopes. This one I noticed is a 70 megahertz scope. That's what I've got. 70 megahertz. My Regal scope. It's actually capable of much more, but it's locked. You need to pay them for a code or hack it. So, RF test equipment, spectrum analyzers, RF signal generators, vector network analyzers, real time spectrum analyzers, and EMC pre compliance test. Function generators, pulse generators, frequency counters. Pre-compliance testing. Okay. Spectrum analyzers, near field probes, LISN, I'm not sure what that is, antennas, TEM cells, and uh, shielded tents. PCB PC based and data acquisition. Okay, so these are basically like USB scopes, aren't they? High speed digitizers, standalone and PC based, multi input standalone, voltage input PC based, temperature input PC based. All right, multimeters, benchtop multimeters, handheld multimeters. I only get myself, my next multimeter purchase is going to be some of the ones from the EED blog that Dave's making. I, uh, I also have five of these cheapo ones, which I got for five bucks each from AliExpress. Cheap as chips, and I got them just to do little uh, resistance and voltage and silly little things. But basically, I'd have, I could measure a whole lot of, them at the same time. Of course, I've got four channels on my scope um, as well, and I do actually have a relatively decent multimeter. It's uh, also from JCAR, I believe, Digitech. It's just it's a, it's, an, it's a Yumcha brand, but it, it's quite good. It certainly meets my needs, which are pretty humble needs. Oh, I've got a bench multimeter as well. I don't know if I could show you that. Probably could. Uh, why not? I might as well, huh? So, uh, oh, my Elgato. Why is my Elgato not working? Should work. It says it's working. Huh. Huh, I don't quite understand why that's not working. Anyway, we won't waste our... We won't spend our time worrying about that. Let's just keep on having a look at what we can get from Emona. They do make a whole lot of equipment. Handheld meters. Power supplies. Okay. DC output general purpose. DC output professional series. DC output high power. AC output. Other benchtop instruments. DC loads. LCR meters. Micro ohm meters, waveform amplifier, instrument and process calibrators, electrical test equipment calibrator, portable voltage, current, temperature and process calibrators, decade boxes. Hey, that's cool. Yeah, very cool. I, I would like to get myself one. Capacitance, inductance and resistance. That's awesome. I wonder if you can get that all in one. That would be awesome. Harness and cable testers, 
low voltage cable and harness tester, high voltage cable and harness tester, cable wire custom interfaces, high pot and production testers, manual PC interface, uh, automated programmable, leakage current tester, 3D printers, wow, there you go. Multi-layer PCB 3D printers. Holy cow. I didn't even know you could. That's great. Wouldn't it be cool to have one of those? Wow. Very cool product line. Ah, and here's more of their additive manufacturing stuff. This is Emona again that we were just looking at previously. So this is some more uh, of their stuff. Looks like they, uh, I don't really understand. Oh, I see. So Emona are the, uh, are the resellers and these are the uh, brands that they stock. There we go. Wow. So uh, I'm definitely going to have a look at the Emona website and see what they're selling because it uh, looks like pretty cool stuff. Okay. So um, this is just telling you about uh, various uh, 3D printers, as I understand it. There you go. Design, print, test, repeat. That's great. Wow. Yeah, I, I would really love to own a machine that could print a circuit board for me. That would be really cool. I have no idea what they cost. Hey, this was cool. I, uh, I saw this demoed. This is the Scuba Scope Light. It's a um, it's a uh, a magnifying. It's a HDMI microscope. Uh, 190 times zoom. It was amazing to see this thing operate. And this was the uh, this was the the 4K model, which was serious business. Very cool. These were cool. So uh, the the light is about two grand Aussie Buckaroos, and the other ones three and a half grand. So uh, when I'm a millionaire, I'll get one. Ah, and the good old Outronics catalog. And look at this. This is the 2024 to 2025. 32nd edition of the Altronics catalog and uh, now this my friends is an Australian institution in America they have Radio Shack in Australia they have Altronics and they also have JCAR uh, I don't know if JCAR was there if they were I don't think I saw them but as we figured out there was a hundred stalls and I only went to 25 of them so JCAR might have been there and I missed them. But this is an absolutely up-to-date version of the Altronics catalog. And these guys stock pretty much everything. Uh, there's a, a message from the founder in the front of the magazine here. A message from Jack O'Donnell. Hello and welcome to our latest Altronics catalog, this being our 32nd edition. There we go, Jack O'Donnell, Managing Director. Now Redback, I mentioned this earlier at the beginning of the video, they make professional audio products including personal amplifiers and that sort of thing. Um, uh, but they are not the same Redback that was uh, sponsoring the, uh, the Electronics. 
So we've got a audio visual, CCTV and security on it. I'm going the wrong way. Audio visual, professional audio, speakers, CCTV and security, test and measurement, tools, technology and data, projects, lead lighting, car, caravan, four wheel drive, power, transformers, hardware, components, switches, connectors, cable, index and ordering um, and this okay so this is just a selection of some of the stuff that's in this thing you know I, I've seen these before um, and I can't like I don't have one and I just wonder if maybe I should get one I've got some third hands and I think I have all the third hands I need, but I don't have one of this particular model and I, I do always look at it and sort of just wonder if I'm missing out by not having one with these magnetic uh, things. I don't know. Just don't know. About Altronics. For over 40 years, Altronics has been a valued supplier of quality electronic components and public address equipment. Our products available from our 11 stores locations and online a source from around the globe good work Altronics they're actually based I believe over in Western Australia and then they spread around the country I, I think they've got an office in Auburn I believe in Sydney is that right they'll tell us in the front here where was that where was that page are you going to tell us where the stores are or maybe it was on the first page Hmm. I'm confused. Yeah, I don't know. And this is their, their Redback brand, which is, as you can see, is all of this uh, PA equipment, intercoms and, and, uh, and announcing systems and all that sort of stuff. So this is all their AV stuff. More of the Redback brand. Okay, so they've got uh, remote controls. I don't think I've got any universal remote controls. I've never programmed a programmable remote control. One of our JCAR mini projects is going to be a um, an extender for uh, for infrared remote controls. Oh, pardon me. So these are just uh, cables, AV cables, RF, HDMI. Wow. There's some uh, 3.5 millimeter jacks. Ah, oh, these are good. The uh, TV brackets, wall mounting. Got a couple of those myself in the lab here. <laughs> Noise cancelling Bluetooth headphones. They sound pretty good, don't they? 139 bucks. I am going to get myself a pair of those soon. But uh, probably not those ones. I saw some cool Sony ones I think I've put in my wish list. There's a whole lot of other options there as well. 100 volt line systems. So there's just some information there. That's not a product, that's just info about high voltage. So this is their Redback uh, PAs again. They do love plugging their Redback PAs. Looks like pretty high quality gear, doesn't it? So that's pretty good. Cost you a thousand bucks though. Uh, different bits and pieces for different. Uh, applications Wow 
this is uh, this is all professional audio they say so they've, they've uh, front loaded that haven't they they tell you all about their redback uh, line of products and more power to them that does look like quality gear very specialized some of it isn't it very specialized So these are various uh, public address systems. They have them in big factories and schools and oh, they actually make uh, the megaphone. That's cool. Oh, okay, and they've got a red phone for for announcing uh, emergencies. Haha. <laughs> Alert evac tone generator. So it's basically alarm systems here now and push buttons to turn them on. Sealed lead acid batteries. Wow. We're still we're up to page 90 and we're still looking at professional audio. So there's a that, that's a, oh look microphones now. I tell you, uh, Dave Jones told me about the Rode microphones. I'm going to get those because those are the ones that Dave said to get. Uh, so I got a lot of things to get. I got about twenty, twenty-five thousand dollars worth of bits and pieces to get uh, for the lab. It's all stuff that I'm planning to get later. Twenty-five grand just on tools and equipment for the lab. Now, speakers. Lots of options here for speakers. These are fire alarm speakers. More fire speakers. Ceiling speaker grills. I oh, look at this. Weather resistant high power sound columns. Sound columns. I haven't seen a sound column. I've seen the sound bar. I've got a sound bar actually under my desk. It's the cheaper one. I think it's laser is the is the uh, manufacturer. So more speakers. Yeah. Okay, so we finally landed on CCTV. How much you pay for a CCTV camera? It's like a few hundred bucks. 300 bucks, 200 bucks. Fair enough. Then you get down to the low end, 70 bucks. I wonder what the resolution is on a 70 buck CCTV. That's 1080, 1080p, which is shit resolution. It's not 4K. I suppose the, I suppose the good ones are 4K. Is it 4K? That's not 4K. Uh, are you going to give me a straight answer? Okay, no, none of that's 4K. Oh, this is 4K. There you go. So uh, 4K, 370 bucks. Hmm. But uh, a lot of them uh, don't do 4K. You really, if you're going to have security cameras, they need to be high resolution because otherwise you just get a little blurry picture and it looks like a person robbing you, but you can't see their face. So you can't ID them. You really need super high resolution if you're going to have effective uh, security cameras. Fascinating, fascinating. So this is more alarm stuff, passive infrared detectors, access control, so like remote control switches for doors. Ah, now this is the, uh, yeah, there you go. It's uh, $15 they're flogging these things for. I, I got mine for much cheaper than that from AliExpress and they're basically the same. They all come out of the same factory and uh, Yeah, this one I think uh, is even a newer model. Uh, not sure. 
It's got 10 amp. Oh, that's got 10 amp. It's got 200 milliamp. That's got 200 milliamp. Oh, this has got 200 microamps. So does that. I'm not sure what the points of difference are. Not many. So there you go. You can get the same thing from Altronics for uh, 15 bucks. And then there's higher end multimeters. <clears throat> Analog multimeter. 75 bucks. Isn't that a blast from the past? I'm almost tempted to get one just for nostalgia value. I used to have one when I was a kid. I didn't know what happened to it. Insulation tester. LC multimeter. Digital multimeter and LAN tester. Something that I intend to get actually is a LAN cable tester. Here we've got scope probes, IC clips, alligator, croc test leads, SMDP, SM, SMD probes, which is just like the ones that I showed you earlier. Ah. Okay, so they're flogging an oscilloscope. I'm not sure what brand it is. Hard to say. Yeah, I don't know. 40 me megahertz LCD handheld scope and digital multimeter for 450 bucks or not quite that much now a cable tester $41 yeah I'm definitely in the market for one of those power of ethernet detector cable length tester that's cool isn't it $229 more network cable testing hey I really love these Atlas things I'm gonna get the full set look they've got one two three four for sale here uh, they've got the uh, the LCR meter uh, component analyzer um, uh, DCA Pro component analyzer and the ESR Plus so uh, yeah, if I've got a, a, a lousy uh, uh, $1,000, I'll get the full set. I'm not sure if the Pro can do what the others can do. And this is a component analyzer. Identifies germanium and silicon transistors, JFETs, low-power thyristors and triacs, Darlington's, MOSFETs, LEDs, diodes, and diode networks. Now, the DCA Pro... MOSFET, yes. JFET, yes. IGBT, extra. LED, yes. XANA, extra. Diode networks, yes. Voltage regulators, wow. Uh, that's extra. Triax, um, yes. Thyristors, yes. Transistors, okay. Yes. Gain, uh, VBE and leakage. Powerful PC software with graphing and curve tracing functions. Graphical display screen, easy connection. Now, it didn't say anything about germanium transistors, but that's probably just covered. Uh, JFETs it did. Low power Darlington's. It just says transistors here. Maybe it does Darlington's. It does MOSFETs, LED, diode network. So if you get the DCA Pro, there's no reason to get the, the component analyzer because they have the same functions. Now the, uh, the LCR45, uh, L is for inductor, C is for capacitor, R is for resistor. So the LCR just does those passive, passive component uh, analyzer. With a new micro including 12-bit ADCs and new software written from the ground up, this new LCR analyzer incorporates advanced maths based on complex impedance analysis. This allows for enhanced inductor, resistor and capacitor value measurement as well as comprehensive and detailed impedance display. Resistance from 1 ohm to 2 mega ohm plus or minus 0 0.1 ohm or 1%. Uh, capacitance. 0 PF to 10,000 microfarads. Inductance, 0 microhenries to 10 henries. Uh, peak test voltage. So between 1 and negative 1 and negative and positive 1 volts. Okay. Uh, peak test current is uh, uh, around about 3.25 milliamps. Test frequency, accuracy, plus or minus 1%. 
sine purity typically 60 minus 60 decibels third harmonic I really don't understand harmonics and decibels I, I, I gotta learn more about that and uh, okay so that's the the passive component analyzer 269 bucks no need to get this uh, one for 179 if you get the one for 379 and then the ESR that will just do uh, ESR's um, equivalent series resistance for uh, capacitor testing. So measuring a capacitor's ESR, which is the equivalent series resistance, is a great indicator of capacitor condition. The Atlas ESR offers instance results. Just connect the probes and press test. No need to worry about polarity. You can even use it in circuit, saving you the trouble of removing capacitors. When testing capacitors out of a circuit, the unit will also display the capacitance. If a capacitor is charged, the unit will automatically carry out a controlled discharge procedure before measuring the capacitor and the ESR. Audible feedback during testing provides indication of high or low readings. Includes GP23AE 12 volt battery. Oh, fascinating. Dimensions uh, 100 by 70 by 20 millimeters features a uh, dynamic range of 0 to 4, 40 ohms uh, fine ESR resolution down to 0 0.01 ohms supports 1 microfarad to uh, 22,000 microfarads ideal for low DC resistance checking such as PCB shorts industry standard 100 kilohertz test frequency long life battery included fascinating so I really want to get that one and that one and that one and I don't need to get that one and uh, what will that be that'll be 300 plus 400 plus it's it's the best part of a thousand dollars I, I already do have some uh, uh, test equipment. It, it's not as high quality as the Atlas stuff. Um, I got that one and this one. Now this is just a capacitor meter and this is an ESR meter. Um, and they're the, they're the cheaper ones that I picked up from uh, AliExpress. And you see here, um, you must discharge the capacitor before you, you don't want to accidentally plug it in uh, and while the capacitor is charged because it, it'll blow uh, I think I have a capacitor discharge pen here somewhere as well I'm not sure where I keep it do we want to see my capacitor discharge pen I'm not I'm not I'm not seeing where it is oh yeah there it is so uh, this is it here capacitor discharge pen and uh, yeah that's that so let's keep on keeping on Some more uh, testing equipment soldering irons pretty happy with my soldering iron it's a hacko it's a cheapo Chinese brand but it, uh, it's quite good no any complaints about it I, uh, I turned it up really high and I melted my tip I didn't know that you could do that but you can if you, if you use a temperature that's too high the tip will wear out very quickly I made some notes they're stuck down here I uh, yeah, 365 degrees Celsius. It's the temperature that I like to put my uh, soldering iron on. So we're just looking at some tools here: pliers, crimpers, wire cutters. There's a extraordinary, extraordinary um, uh, range. I have a bunch of cheaper ones up there on my uh, on my on my pegboard but uh, I got them a long time ago 
and uh, now I have better tools so once you've got a better tool there's not much point having the old crappy tools anymore because you never need to use them because you've got a better tool I want to get some uh, some of these um, perf boards but I find them just to be extremely expensive like I was hoping to pay like 20 cents for a board but they're more like five bucks each just seems like a lot so we're at glue and adhesives circuit board cleaner label remover flux remover they got everything cleaning solvent contact cleaner isopropyl there you go So uh, various Ethernet and USB data thingies, some I/O equipment there, hard drive caddy. So I've actually got one of those. Three D printing. I'm looking forward to getting into three D printing one day. My mate has one actually, so uh, I could probably ask him to print me some stuff. Ah, this is fun. Arduino stuff. How much is the Leonardo? That's a mega ESP. Uh, yeah, but where is. They're not advertising the Leonardo by the looks of it. They've got the Uno and the mega. Yeah. Mega box. That looks kind of like fun, doesn't it? Various shields. So good fun. And then sensors. I've got all of these. I've got all of them. <clears throat> yeah. I uh, I just ordered one of these uh, LCD touchscreens today for the. Um, for the first JCAR mini project in the silicon chip magazine which I'll be doing soon so this is all bits and pieces for uh, the Arduino sensors and such uh, we've got actuators now, servos, a couple of raspberry pies, what do you pay for a pie? you get a 4 gig pie for 130 bucks or you can get an 8 gig pie raspberry pi 4 180 bucks Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? And the rock board, it's a Pi knockoff, 150 bucks for the four gig model. So it's actually more expensive than the Pi. Yeah, I wonder why. I wonder why it's more expensive. Would have thought if it was going to be a knockoff, you might as well uh, make it cheaper. Wow. Ha! <laughs> the Nes Pi. Look at that. It looks like a Super Nintendo. <laughs> That's pretty funny. I do love the pies. I've got two or three of them, depending how you want to count it. I think one's broken, two are working, one's in production and one's spare. Wow. Five inch HDMI touchscreen for Pi, 120 bucks. What resolution can it do? 800 by 480. It's pretty cool. Seven inch, 1024 by 600 touchscreen. 150 bucks. Wow. Pico Dev, the STEM maker platform designed and developed in Australia, works with RPI and BBC Microbit. Wow. Oh, very interesting. Ah. 
These are bits and pieces for the micro bit. Fair enough. STEM kits. This is for kids trying to get them interested in electronics. I'll have to get them for my little people. I've got some little people. My brother's had a couple of kids. Here we go. There we go. They're still flogging the old uh, Maxitronics kits. I've got all of these. I'm working my way through them on the uh, on the channel. The one that we, we we finished the ten in one, and now we're working our way through the sensor robot twenty. And once that's done, we'll be doing the thirty in one. I also have these radios. I'm, I'm going to do them as little standalone bits and pieces. You know, th this uh, three hundred one. <laughs> I actually have five of these. I suppose I could show you. Have you seen them? This is what they look like. So uh, they've got uh, a breadboard and some buttons and a switch and a potentiometer and a tuning capacitor and an antenna and a power transformer and some LEDs uh, and a seven segment display and a CDS cell and a speaker and some terminals, which I've actually taken off here. Uh, for reasons, I forget what my reasons were. Anyway, I've got the, I've got five of these. I got them because I decided they were an ex ex excellent platform for uh, prototyping. You know, because they got all of the bits and pieces just to hand. But uh, I, uh, I kind of don't use them very much yet. So it was, it was, uh, it was good in theory. Uh, maybe it'll come good one day. Five is a lot. I didn't need to get five. Three would have been enough. Um, so we've got uh, various uh, circuit projects now. That's good fun. We've got old potato power supply. <coughs> My friends wanted to make a, a potato powered uh, web server. I don't know if you could get enough juice out of the potato to run a web server. Okay, power supply kits, regulator, switching regulator. So all sorts of uh, kits, kits, kits. Five-way LCD panel meter adapter. Got some uh, lighting there, torches and headgear. Big torches, big lamps. Okay, so this is uh, 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 strip strip lighting for LEDs. Solar panels, inverters and such. Okay, this is bits and pieces for your car. Okay, bits and pieces for powering connect power connectors for the car. Oh, swag of options. Various power adapters, cables for uh, power, mains power. Ah. Now we're getting into the batteries. Look at those. I got some batteries the other day. I got six for 300 bucks. 12 volt batteries. Pay 50 bucks here and you get. 10 amp hour. They must all be 12 volts. I don't know. Batteries got a lot better. When I was a kid, batteries were terrible. But then they got lithium ion batteries, which are actually quite good. And lead acid. They, they're pretty good as well. When I was a kid, you had a lead acid battery in your car, and that was that. Transformers. As we discussed earlier, the inductors do my head in. Various uh, enclosures. 
there is a, a wide range of enclosure options. So we've got some fans, heat sinks, fuses, car fuses, cable glands, knobs. Here we go. Capacitors. Ah, oh, there we go. And they get got some information here about how to calculate series capacitance and uh, reactants. Capacitors and inductors have the property known as reactants, which is the property that opposes any change in current flow. It therefore most commonly applies to AC. Inductive reactants increases with frequency and capacitive reactants decreases with frequency. When reactance is combined with resistance, a new property known as impedance is formed, which is similar to DC resistance, except it has an associate phase angle due to its relative reactive component. Inductive reactance is calculated as follows. Uh, XL equals 2 by pi times F times L. Capacitive reactance is calculated as follows. So we've got uh, inductive uh, reactance and capacitive reactance. Okay. Uh, and uh, F is the frequency in hertz and all of the rest of them are as you'd expect. Very cool. A whole heap of capacitors. Wow. And uh, now we're up to uh, resistors of various types. Okay. Chokes, inductors. Okay. Variable resistors. And there we go. They've got good information about the uh, resistors as well. That's nice. bunch of options for LEDs. Oh, you can still buy neons. I thought that you couldn't come buy neons anymore, but it looks like they're selling them, so that's good to know. I heard that, that uh, the, the, the LED market had uh, destroyed the, the market for neons. Uh, a lot of people like neons. They're uh, more durable, apparently. I think that's what I remember hearing. Various transistors and other integrated circuits voltage regulators okay here's another one of the uh, oh this is the DCA Pro again we saw that earlier looks like a nice bit of kit the DCA Pro I'm looking forward to getting one okay now we're up to switches wow I suppose this will go for ages there must be so many different types of switches I've got a lot of them. Well, arcade joystick, numeric keypad. When I was a kid, I made like a electronic keypad box, and it was kind of a bit silly because if you had a ruler, you could just slip it in and knock the thing in. It wasn't very secure. Let's just put it that way. All right, now we're getting to some of the more uh, heavy duty electrical stuff. Okay, we're now looking at relays. And finally, we've arrived at connectors. Audio stuff. This is probably some of it duplicated from earlier in the other sections. wonder how many people are involved in making this thing. It must be someone's full-time job. I wonder how much of it's done automatically with software from a database and how much of it's done manually with a person in some bit of software entering in all the information. Hmm. Well, 
looks like we've gone through the whole Altronics kit. I have a bunch of these USB uh, females, by the way. I've got a full box full of them. I'm expecting to use quite a lot of uh, USB connect connections in my uh, exploits. What do we got over here? Wow. Tells you about how to spec out your uh, cables, how how big they need to be and how how long they can be at that size. Fascinating. I'm gonna have a closer look at that. Why don't we have a close look at that together? So says why size matters when it comes to cable there is pretty simple rule to follow more current more copper just like a street water pipe carries more water than your household tap the same com concept applies to power down a cable although we live in a metric world most cables are still measured in American wire gauge or AWG we list all of our cables in AWG such as 4G and 8G etc and their metric equivalent conductor area typically shown in square millimeters our cables also show strand number and size for example 24-0.20 implies 24 strands of 0.20 millimeter diameter copper on the right is a cross reference table showing the characteristics of each AWG size including typical typical current handling. New for this year is a cabling distance and gauge calculator for 12 volt systems showing <coughs> allowing you to quickly find a suitable cable for your installation. We hope you find this helpful. Voltage drop. Shown in the guide above are two voltage drop levels of 3% and 10%. It's important to note that as distance increases, voltage decreases, and this must be factored in when cabling your equipment. 3% is used for critical or voltage sensitive, sensitive equipment. 10% is used for non-critical equipment with wider operating voltage ranges. Check your device specifications to determine which applies to your instal installation. Important note. Please ensure your power circuits are appropriately fused or connected to a resettable circuit breaker to ensure safety at all times. Positive cabling going to earth is a common cause of vehicle fires and your insurance may not cover your loss if wiring is proven to be faulty by an assessor. When in doubt, always consult a professional when adding DC power circuits to your vehicle or caravan. Altronics publishes all information as a guide only. There you go. So there are a bunch of options for wire and that'll about do us for this catalog. Yeah. And then we do we're into the part number index. And that's a wrap. What do we got in the back? Contact information, list of stores. Yeah, as I said, it's in Auburn in New South Wales, which is uh, just east of where I am. Okay, well, I'm going to take a quick break and I'll be right back. All right, well, I'm back. So, wasn't planning to read out the whole Altronics catalog, but uh, that's done now, isn't it? Let's see what else we've got here. Now, this is the Redback Test Services, which are the people who sponsored the, uh, the convention um, and are different to the Altronics Redback people. They must have been the people who gave me the uh, the pogo pins. Mm. Red back. I don't know who gave me those pins. I forget. Engineered solutions. Redback test services is a specialist provider of custom electronic test solutions boasting extensive expertise in design for testability 
test system design and manufacturing. Our commitment is to enhance the efficiency, cost effectiveness and quality of our customers' projects. Awesome. Stars. True vertical integration. Wow. Electronics Manufacturing Service, PCB Assembly, Optical Subassembly, Precision Machine. Wow. Stuff's all beyond my pay grade, that's for sure. Wow. Various automotive products. Engineering services, product experiences. I don't even know what that means. I've put together uh, PCBs for you as well. It's like they're all over the globe. There we go. Quality Eco, proudly serving Australasia since 2003. PCB assembly in 24 hours, the fastest lead time in Australasia. So these guys will uh, will do PCB assembly for you. Various types of printed circuit boards, approved under ISO accredited suppliers. Prototype price from 270 bucks. There you go. They'll do one for uh, 300 bucks. My mates at PCB way will do them for five or six bucks. <sighs> yeah. It's like they can get things done fast for you there. Quality Eco Circuits has been supplying a reliable and comprehensive service for top quality PCBs at the lowest possible cost for over a decade. We also offer a contract assembly service and cable assembly as a part of our turnkey solution to customers. Okay. So these guys, uh, I guess, uh, boast their uh, the turnaround speed. 24 hours, that's pretty good, isn't it? This is Hick Micro Industrial Product Catalog. Looks like thermal imagery, doesn't it? Maybe other sorts of cameras as well. All over the world, Hick Micro. So we've got handheld thermal, acoustic, and software. Fascinating. Tell you about the company, product strengths, image frequency, accuracy, advanced algorithms, tap level and span, super IR, building inspection applications electric utility applications, automotive application, electrical component application. That's what I use my thermal cam for. Industrial handheld thermal. These ones plug into your uh, smartphone. I've seen them, I don't have any of them. I don't need them, I've got two. <clears throat> have you seen my, uh, I, I've got this, uh, <laughs> this one, it's the uh, the No Yaffa, and uh, it's actually kind of cool. It does this. Um, is it going to turn on? I haven't used it for a while. Oh, there it goes. Uh, of course, my my good thermal cam is. Uh, I'll show you. My good thermal cam is this one here, and it's set up to point down on the thing. It's it's a high quality cam. Uh, whereas this this no yaffa, oh, it's turned itself off because it hasn't got enough juice, so I need to I need to charge it. Uh, anyway, it's got this cool little uh, like uh, outlining uh, thing that it does, which is cool. Stick around, I'll show you that in some other video some other day. 
don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> so this is just more of their thermal cam options, the E series and the B series and the pocket series. All right, and the M series and the G series. I've got a thing called a macro lens. I'm not sure uh, how, how to uh, to plug it in or if I even should. I don't know. Should probably have a think about that. I'm kind of inclined to get another uh, thermal cam. I really like my thermal cam, the Uni T thermal cam that I have. Um, but it'd be handy to have a handheld one as well. So I'm thinking about maybe getting an extra one. That wouldn't be a priority for me there. Anyway, there you go. Hick Micro making. Uh, I didn't notice. Did you notice the audio ones? They did that as well. Thermal and audio. IMP Electronic Solutions. So they do PCBs as well. There was a lot of companies there that do PCBs. Uh, there you go. Membrane switches. Decals and labels, silicon keypads. Uh, PCB fabrication. Flexible. Oh, okay. Flexible PCBs. Discover metal components fabrication. Interesting. Cable assembly and wiring. Wow. Pretty handy. Superior solder paste stencil services. So they make stencils for you as well. Good stuff, IMP. Now what do we got here? Micro bit. I don't have any micro bits. I think one day I'm gonna end up with a couple of them. Yeah. So they've got this scratch programming language and JavaScript Python and Swift and others Fascinating. now what have we got here Agnes Z EMS since 1999 so the name of the company is leech Wow. It's pretty cool. Check that out. That's a, a picture of their uh, their fabrication plant. Bunch of systems. Very cool. Lintech. Tomorrow's PCBs today. Looks like they must be uh, doing some military stuff. AS9100 certified. Lintech.com.au <sighs> There you go. What have we got here? Hardcore specialist tested security seals. Okay. Okay. Ah, uh, industry update. I'm gonna have a look at this with you. I'm just gonna take a quick break. I'm back. Just went and had something to eat. I had an apple. <clears throat> now. This is industry update. That's the name of the publication. And they've got my email address now, so they'll be spamming me forever. Um, but that's okay, because I'm kind of interested. It's about manufacturing, which is pretty broad, isn't it? <clears throat> Looks like they've got some defense stuff going on there. <clears throat> so... Yeah. 
open your mind to automation and modern machines. Yeah, all right. Sarah Lee rescued along with 200 jobs. Okay. After going into voluntary administration last October, dessert manufacturer Sarah Lee is set to be sold to the same family that bought Daryl Lee from its administrators in 2012 and made it viable. Fascinating. Gets brutal, isn't it? Commerce. <clears throat> So this is really about manufacturing, which is, uh, it's not really what we do, is it, here on the channel. We're, we're just little electronics hobbyists. We're not industrial manufacturers talking about the need for growth in the small to medium enterprise market in Australia. Australian industry hit hard by insolvencies. So this is obviously an Australian uh, magazine. There you go. So that's... Uh, perhaps of some interest to our global audience uh, but really it's about manufacturing which really isn't super on topic for what we're doing here still we might as well flip through it why not it's only going to take a minute <laughs> imagine getting a spider in you, on you while you're driving your car wouldn't that be terrible Sure, many accidents happen that way. So, obviously, talking about military applications there, Air Force, Navy. <clears throat> Automating production, it's, uh, it's the future. <laughs> Look at this. It's an electric stair climber. That's great. Huh. That's awesome. Amazing. Here it is. The XSTO range of battery electrical stair climbers. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. called trolley decentralized automation Yeah. Oh, we're almost at the end of this bag. There you go. So that's the Industry Update magazine. It's about manufacturing in Australia. Awesome. What do we got here? Innocart IA. Okay, looks like uh, shelving for uh, uh, component reels. Stores 560 or 1,120 7-inch reels. Or... Uh, or 13 inch reels is another option. Wow. There we go, there's the specs of their thing. So this is just shelving for components. Awesome. And uh, here we are, element 14. I would have got this from a mate test turner. Delivering best in class e procurement solutions from punch out <coughs> to our exclusive iBuy tool. Choose, choose the solution that is right for you. On the back here. Okay, just contact information. So as I said, I'm an Element 14 customer. I, I do uh, order from them. I think is it Mouser? I'm not sure. Did they say they were an AV net company? I don't know. 
Anyway, Element 14, I'm pretty sure, is the uh, Aussie brand. And I think that they're a global brand, but they operate uh, under a different name in other parts of the world. And I forget what that is. Might be Mauser. I'm not sure. Or Farnell, perhaps. A premier Farnell company. So I think in the States, Element 14 is known as Farnell. If you know, feel free to let me know in the comments. Uh, anyway, Element 14, I, I do buy from them. I'm, I'm a customer. I've got an account. Access Assemble Aspire line card. Again, from uh, Element 14. Multicomp Pro. So they're plugging their Multicomp Pro test equipment there on the back. It's pretty good. Now, unfortunately, the uh, the wide um, form factor doesn't do really good on the bench. But uh, I'll flip through. Okay, so this is passives. That'll be uh, capacitors, resistors. Memory, FPGA, wow, fascinating, what do they call this, line card, ah, oh, the lines, the product lines, that's what that's all about, so they basically tell you, uh, for any given uh, product, product line like uh, power LED drivers or optics LED pipes it'll tell you um, which which brands they stock for for the thing very interesting very interesting connectors and cable automation and process control industrial automation electromechanical Fans, fuses, relays, transformers, wow, sensors, switches. So it's literally just uh, what the product category is and then what the manufacturer is and then a dot where they stock it. Single board computers, development boards, we've got analog. Analog, isn't that microchip now? I'm not sure. Uh, or maybe they just literally mean analog yeah okay and then I'm expecting to see uh, okay I'm a bit confused I don't know I oh, know this is this is not um, oh there we go single board computers Oh, okay, they didn't do a, they didn't do a line card for single board computers. <clears throat> soldering and desoldering test tools. What have we got here? Static protection. Okay. And this is a list of brands that they stock, including Intel, analog devices. No AMD. What about microchip? Why, not, why am I not seeing microchip? I would expect to see them on this. Oh, there's NVIDIA. Fascinating. Packaging. There's your AMD. Those are the FPGAs from AMD, I think. There we go. Alright, so that was a, a little thing called the line card. I haven't seen a line card before in my memory. So, keep pace with an ever-changing market. This is more advertising from Element 14. Ah, oh, there we go. There's microchip. That's what I was looking for. So they do stock them. Of course they do. There you go. This Multicomp Pro. Again, element 14, plugging the multi-comp bro. I might have a closer look at that. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty wide variety of uh, products. Resistors to uh, oscilloscopes. 
Here's Mauser. So, what's new in electronics? 60 years of innovation and the future of continued growth. Okay. And on the back? <clears throat> on track is introducing new services to enhance your contract manufacturing experience. So this looks like an Australian company based in Milpera, New South Wales. See us at Electronics. Okay. It's an ad for DigiKey. I'm not quite sure what we're looking at here. I think this is the Mauser um, product catalog. Uh, and their flogging. Oh, this is the Roden Schwartz gear. Look at that. Okay, and this is an ad for electronics. Australia's largest electronics expo returns to Sydney. Electronics, the electronics design and assembly expo will be held at Rose Hill Gardens Event Centre from 19th 20th of June 2024, featuring a vast array of new products and technology for companies using electronics in design, assembly, manufacture and service. The event was first held in 2010 and this year's expo will feature over 100 leading companies and suppliers with the latest innovations and solutions for a range of electronic applications. Trade visitors will be able to discuss their applications and talk to experts who can assist them in finding the right products and solutions for their business. A post-show survey in Melbourne last year revealed that 96% of visitors said the expo was beneficial for their industry, 90% found new companies, and 85% discovered new products and technology they were not aware of. The SMCBA, Electronics Design and Manufacturer Conference, will be held in conjunction with the Electronics and feature sessions and technical workshops from international and local experts. Electronics will feature a range of electronic components, service mount and inspection equipment, test and measurement and other ancillary products and services, enabling attendees to discuss their specific requirements with contract manufacturers that can design and produce turnkey solutions. The show welcomes designers, engineers, managers, industry enthusiasts and other decision makers who are involved in designing or manufacturing products that utilize electronics. It is the only specialized event for the electronics industry in Australia. With many Australian manufacturers now focusing on niche products and high-tech applications, the event provides an important focal point for the industry in Australia. Free seminars and, seminars and IPC hand soldering competition, SMCBA conference. There you go. <clears throat> laser marking system. The M2900 laser marking system from SC Manufacturing Solutions is designed to help generate 1D and 2D codes, text, logos, and optical characters. Ah, fascinating. Okay, there's an ad for microchip. Weather station, computer on module. All right. Tunable colored films and displays and sensors. Microscope, data logger, digital oscilloscope. Imona instruments. We heard about Imona earlier, didn't we? Frequency analyzer, cleaning and defluxing solvent, diodes. Wow. Microscope, vapor degreaser. Wow, it's a pretty specialized bit of kit. More, uh, the Konga TC700 COM Express Compact Computer on Modules with Intel Core Ultra Processors 
code name Meteor Lake, a power efficient x86 client system on chips. The computer on modules feature up to 6 P cores and up to 8 E cores and 2 low, core, low power E cores, spawning up to 22 threads, making it possible to consolidate distributed devices into a single platform. Wow. Computers are just getting silly, aren't they? Brain inspired system gathers data from salt size sensors. Wow. Tiny Ethernet module. ST Microelectronics. Yeah, right. ST Microelectronics has released the STM32 MP2 industrial microprocessors from the second generation of its industrial microprocessors, MPUs, to drive progress in smart factories, smart healthcare, smart buildings, and smart infrastructure. I have a few of those uh, microprocessors. Ethernet. You want to see them? Why not? I'll show them to you. I have uh, other bits and pieces, but these are the main ones. These are the uh, STM32F411, called the Black Pill. And then the other one's the... Uh... Oh, these might all be the same. Yeah, they are. They're the STM32F411. <coughs> so... Uh... And then I've got these ones, which are uh, the STM32G431CBU6. <laughs> wow. Anyway, I haven't I haven't had a good play with these yet, but uh, my mate is uh, using them for the um, the MIDI synthesizer project that I've been working on so many things to do serial communication board it's uh, PCIe still trying to get my head around serial comms serial comms has been around for ages and I think that the ultimate serial comms really is USB isn't it SATA now as well hard drives have gone serial Here's more of the SPM microcontrollers. Ah. Camera frame grabber card. Huh. Fascinating. And uh Okay. Well we're nearly at the end of our uh, literature. Inventing a smart future, Simcom. I wonder what these guys do. They're all over the globe by the looks of it. These great big global companies that are called something like Simcom and who knows what they do. Probably nothing that's super relevant to what I do. Inventing a smart future about Simcom. Simcom Wireless Solutions Limited is a global leading IoT wireless modules and solutions supplier. Since established in 2002, Simcom has been fully committed to providing a variety of wireless modules and terminal level solutions worldwide, such as 5G, 4G, LTE, A, LTE, M, CAT M1, MB, IoT, 3G, 2G, and GPS, uh, GLONASS, BIODO, satellite positioning technology. Simcom insists on providing high quality modules and industry solutions. So they make uh, they make wireless uh, chip, chips, I guess you'd say, wouldn't you? Fascinating. Very fascinating. Pretty serious tech. So presumably you can buy these things and plug them in and then you've got connectivity over whatever the medium is. 
I've got a theory that one day when you buy a computer, it'll just come with a like a uh, a built-in GSM service that's just been prepaid for the life of the device, so it'll just be wirelessly connected via IPv6 to the inter the public internet, <sighs> and uh, all you need to do is keep it powered, and it'll stay on the network. Who knows? Maybe that's the future. ECI M1, the discrete manufacturer's ERP software solution. All right. Wow. So they're talking about ERP, which is Enterprise Resource Planning Software. All right. And we're nearly at the end. What have we got here? Global Link Electronics, partner whom, whom you can rely and entrust on. Uh, EMS. So they make they make stuff. There you go. Manufacturing, assembly, research and development, final testing. Uh, and what a good one to end on. This is the Scuba Scope. I told you about it earlier, it costs 2000 bucks. Uh, it does a very good job. All right. Well, we got to the end. I, uh, I did think about going through the, uh, the uh, program and having a look at the 100 websites of the 100 um, exhibitionists. But I don't think I'll do that because I just spent, what, an hour, two hours, I don't know. A lot of time with you now going through everything that I managed to acquire on the day. So I'm going to uh, package all that up and put it in a box and archive it and that'll be that. So uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, having a look at some of what's going on in the electronics industry in Australia. Um, thanks very much for watching and don't forget to click like and subscribe.